Die Erdoberfläche besteht nicht aus einem einzigen geschlossenen großen Mantel, sondern aus sieben einzelnen gewaltigen Kontinentalplatten und mehreren kleineren. Bei Japan treffen gleich vier dieser Platten aufeinander. Die Eurasische, die Philippinische, die Pazifische Platte und die Nordamerikanische. Magma, das vom heißen Kern im Innern der Erde aufsteigt, hält die Erdplatten ständig in Bewegung. Dort, wo sich eine Platte unter die andere schiebt, entstehen Erdbeben. In den Meeren passiert das in den sogenannten Tiefseegräben. Sie verlaufen besonders im Pazifischen Ozean. Wenn sich dort eine Erdplatte ruckartig über eine andere schiebt, hebt sich der Meeresboden. Riesige Wassermengen werden durcheinander gewirbelt und nach oben geschleudert. Eine Flutwelle entsteht, ein Tsunami, der sich in alle Richtungen ausbreitet. Mit bis zu 700 Kilometern in der Stunde kann die Wasserwalze übers offene Meer auf das Ufer zurasen. Auf hoher See ist von der Wucht der Wassermassen nur wenig zu spüren, die Wellen sind kaum mehr als zwei Meter hoch. Treffen sie aber auf flacheres Wasser, dann türmen sie sich auf, es entstehen gewaltige Wasserwände, die mehr als 30 Meter hoch werden können und durch nichts zu stoppen sind, wie jetzt in Japan. Die anderen Pazifikanrainer kamen bislang glimpflich davon, Hawaii zum Beispiel mit einer 1-Meter-Welle, Entwarnung auch an der US-Westküste. Chile soll der Tsunami gegen 24 Uhr erreichen, aber wohl mit deutlich weniger Wucht als hier in Japan. Wie sich die Situation in Japan weiterentwickelt, können Sie in unserem Live-Ticker auf heute.de weiter verfolgen. Und in einem ZDF-Spezial gleich im Anschluss an diese Heute-Sendung, Tsunami-Katastrophe in Japan. So he actually saw the wave of water coming. And the little town that, that, that he was in was is basically destroyed. Basically, the way he explained it is it's not a little town anymore. What uh, they were, you know, that's what they were heading to be. Uh, Kamioka was a little town they were staying in. The hotel, that's where they were all going together for the safe place. And they didn't know what had happened till they got there. And they, it was, he said getting there was a, was a problem because the roads had, uh, they left a lot of the roads, a lot of cave-ins, the ground had Cars so the hotel, he, the hotel he's staying at has been destroyed. I understand they grabbed some blankets because, uh, as you said, some of them didn't even have clothes or shoes. Um, right. And, when, and when, when you actually talked to him, where was he? He was uh, outside of the hotel at Tavioka. He said they were going for higher ground. He said they were going to get out of the hotel. The ground was still shaking. They had a, uh, it sounded like a smaller van. Is what they were leaving in. So they were going to high ground to get because they could hear the wind starting to blow. They they felt like the, the water the wave was coming back. Then the rumbling sound I could hear it over the phone so loud. The quake. He said it's another it's another quake. And then the, it just kept rolling. He said the ground was shaking under my feet. And what a lot of people don't realize is it's it's cold there. I mean it it, it was freezing. snowing. I, I understand what you said. Uh, and I was worried about, you know, that part, by not having proper clothing, and um, where he, where they had to stay, I don't know. I was told they found them, they were accounted for, but I still don't know where he's at. Uh, this has got to be a nightmare for you waiting. Just waiting to hear, and the more I hear on the news is that they had problems with two more uh, nuclear plants, so now what? What are, what are we facing now? It's just one after another. another.